Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to tell you the story of my favorite car I have owned so far. I'm going to tell you where I found it and a bit about my journey to England back in summer 2017 when I went to purchase my BMW E38 740i short wheel base facelift model with a very rare active cruise control option. I have been told that only 11 right hand drive cars produced in the UK market receive this option. I'm going to do a more detailed video someday on the ACC system and how it works but in this video I'm going to concentrate on the paint job and the restoration of the 740i. I'm also going to show you the work it took to bring this beauty back to its former glory and as close as possible to its original looks when it came out of the factory with some minor modifications. At the time I didn't have a YouTube channel so sadly I didn't record the journey and I didn't film as much of the paint restoration process as I would have liked but I took some videos and mostly pictures which I hope it will give you an idea of what is involved in a car restoration of this caliber. I had been on the market for a BMW Modern Classic for a while and I was especially looking at the E38 model but most of the cars for sale were 728s, 735s I came across a few 750s, but the one I really wanted was a facelift short wheel base 740i with the famous V8 M62 TU Vanos engine. I had been searching for at least 6 months and I knew what budget to set aside um, as I wanted one in as good condition as possible, but not perfect as I wanted to restore it and also get to know the car as much as possible by doing all the work myself. After checking every possible car website, local newspapers, many messages, calls and wasted time, I finally saw the right car for me in autotrader.co.uk, which was within my budget too. I gave the owner a call and after about 10 minutes of conversation, I knew that this was the right car for me and quite importantly, it was coming from a very nice guy who loved it too, but due to family and work, he didn't have the time anymore and it was only being wasted sitting in the driveway rusting away. And sadly, not putting smiles on anyone's face for the past few years before my ownership started. So this was the brief story of how the E38 came into my possession. Now let's take a look at the body and paint restoration process. The first thing I did was to completely clear the car and the boot from all unnecessary items as it was going to get a little dusty for a while. I started with the removal of the front and rear bumpers. Then I removed the headlights, tail lights, fog lights and the little plastic air ducts from the front bumper. After this, I removed the wheel housing plastic covers on both sides and of course the plastic seals as my car is the facelift model. One of the most time consuming jobs was to remove all trim and panels from the car without breaking any clips or breaking as little clips as possible as they are very hard to find and they cost an absolute fortune. I also took everything from the body shop home and washed every single piece individually with warm soapy water to get rid of all the dust and debris. And finally, before tackling the rust problems, I had to remove the rear and front badges. I decided to take some measurements to help me with the installation after the paint job was completed. It was time to deal with the rust and rotting issues under the car. Um, I decided to give this job to a professional welder who did an excellent job in the end. I knew there was rust on the rear right passenger side but did not expect to find this much rot and eventually when I poked the metal with a screwdriver I ended up with a hole in the floor. When we lifted the car on the left I could clearly see the full scale of the problem, but I still didn't regret buying the car. 
We took a deep breath and we made a start on revealing the full picture by grinding off the layer of dirt, rust and body protection coat in the affected area. After the area was clear, the rotten metal was removed and we ended up with a large hole in the floor. We carefully measured the area and transferred onto a cardboard template. Then we used the template to transfer onto a sheet of new steel and cut the size with the grinder. The welding of the panel took a few hours to complete as the correct technique of welding thin metal is by creating multiple single spot welds every few seconds in order to keep the metal as cool as possible and not warp it by obviously overheating it. If you're wondering what this mess is and why the car is wrapped in aluminium foil, the honest answer is I had to improvise with something um, as we did not expect we were going to be doing such a big job on a Sunday. Um, the shops were closed and we were not prepared but at the same time we wanted to protect the interior of the car and all cables. At this point, the welding underneath the car was complete, so the next step was to attack the other minor rust spots on doors, boot, wheel arches and other panels. After this, we treated the exposed metal with rust converter and after the converter dried, um, we applied primer to seal the bare metal. Any areas where there were present dents and imperfections um, we used a puller and a small amount of filler which was then sanded and another coat of primer applied to seal any exposed metal. The area around the boot closing mechanism, especially under the rubber seal and boot door are one of the most common places for rust to appear. I wasn't planning to leave this to deteriorate anymore so I sanded the rust, I treated it with rust converter, I primed, I sanded, wet sanded, then masked the car in order to apply base coat and lacquer. After I sorted the rust issue at the back of the car, it was time to prepare the body of the car for paint. All the areas were covered with primer, the car was sanded, wet sanded and eventually ready for the long weight base coat and clear coat. At this stage you will see how the car looks after four coats of base coat and four coats of lacquer. It took more than five liters of base coat and another five liters of lacquer to cover the five meter long beast. At this point you can see the quality of the finish and I can't wait to show you the finished product but I still want to show you how we were going to achieve the perfect factory look and part of this was our dedication and attention to detail. I'm not going to lie to you as I didn't expect how big of a project I took on but in order to achieve my goal every small panel, trim, door handles, wing mirrors and many more had to be sprayed separately and I am sure you can appreciate the effort it took and the final result when you see it.
Now comes the time to get some decent wheels to match the rest of the car. The car came with its original set of staggered Style 32 alloy wheels, 8J at the front and 9J at the back, which means that it came with 235, 50, 18 tires at the front and 255, 45, 18 at the back. The original wheels were not bad, but I always wanted to put a nice set of genuine BMW staggered M parallel style 37 wheels, as in my opinion these suit best this type of BMW modern classic cars. The new set was original staggered for the E38 with the smaller hub diameter, which came from E38 sport model. Wheel size was a bit different, front wheels were the same, 8J, but the rear wheels were 9.5J, which meant that I had to install 265, 45, 18 at the back. You're obviously seeing the final stages and the final application of lacquer to seal the M Sport badges on the wheels. I will rewind the tape a few months back as I want to tell you how much effort it took to find the right set of wheels and the preparation before what you're seeing right now. After a few months of searching the web, I came across this set of wheels on eBay. I bought them at £350, including the delivery, which was a bargain for a decent set of genuine and parallel wheels, which were not damaged or welded. They were sprayed in blue and white color, which was absolutely ridiculous, but this didn't matter as I was going to sandblast them anyway. The sandblasting cost £25 per wheel. After the blasting, I had to sand them and fill in all small holes. After this, the wheels were sanded again, edge primed, sanded, wet sanded, primed again to fill in any remaining holes. Then I had to sand them, wet sand them again, I washed them, degraced them, and then we applied the four coats of base coat and four coats of lacquer. So this is what it takes to achieve this quality finish. At this point, I'm going to stop talking and let you enjoy the last part where you're going to see the finished product. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did and thanks for watching.